Hi, I'm the old school fish guy, also known as Don. Today I want to talk about Tubafix. Tubafix worms, um, man, there's a lot of misinformation and myths about them. Uh, I think the modern hobbyists uh, that do know anything about Tubafix make everything far more complicated than it needs to be. So what I want to do is just talk about them for a little bit. Um, you know, back in the old days, I was breeding a lot of quarry cats. I had uh, 30 fish tanks and 28 of them were breeding quarry doras. And my quarry dora tanks all had under gravel filters with about an inch or so of aquarium gravel and in that aquarium gravel there were live tube, tube effects everywhere it looked like a waving sea of little flags and when a corridor came by those flags would all jump down into the ground <laughs> You know, some say that uh, tube effects are uh, too fatty. Yeah, scientists tell us they're about 50% fat. That's all right. Um, I didn't feed my corridors exclusively. Um, they always had a lot of vegetable matter in them too, uh, in their tanks. It said that tube effects can cause disease in your aquarium, in your fish. Well, perhaps. So let's learn a little about tube effects. It seems like today everyone's afraid to use them, but they'll use the uh, freeze dried, huh? If tube effects are so bad, disease infested, wouldn't the freeze dried ones be disease infested too? Or does freeze drying purify them? I mean, we know it takes away a lot of the vitamins and minerals. Um, yeah, so let's just learn about tube effects. First off, where do they grow in nature? They grow in the sediment in the bottom of lakes and rivers. But like many animals, mankind's changed some of that. They also grow in the sewer systems, in the uh, water coming out of various factories places like that. Um, yeah, the ones coming out of the, you, know, you find in the sewer systems, those aren't the ones you want. <laughs> the best source to get them from is some kind of science lab where they use them for experiments or from uh, a big commercial wholesale supplier. Um, some local fish stores unfortunately um, have somebody that goes out and collects them and sells them to them and they sell them to you and you might be getting some bad stuff. Ask your local fish store uh, where, what's their source and do a little research and investigation. If they won't tell you what their source is, uh, you probably want to avoid them. <laughs> now there's two, basically two different kinds of tube effects, yeah, at least in the aquarium hobby. There's actually 13 different species that have been identified so far. But in the uh, aquarium hobby, we have, uh, back in the old school days, all I saw was red tube effects. Today, everyone talks about black worms. I guess that's because they don't want to use tube effects because it's got a bad rep. Um, black worms are nothing but tube effects. There's red tube effects, there's black tube effects. And they actually grow up to eight inches long. I've read different reports or seen videos that say two inches, uh, maybe three inches. Uh, but according to the scientists that I've read, not the hobbyists, they say they can grow up to 20 centimeters, which is about eight inches, I believe. Um, as far as culturing tube effects, 
I've just watched a whole bunch of videos on it read a whole bunch of postings on different forums and I just as I said before I just think the modern hobbyist is making this far more complex than it needs to be um, so let me tell you what I know based on my experience because I used to culture them all the time um, no I'm not using them today uh, my tanks are set up a little different and I've chosen not to use tube effects although I keep debating that keep thinking about eh, maybe I should add tube effects in who knows maybe I will this year but uh, people talk about well keeping a five gallon aquarium lots of oxygen and uh, use peat moss that you've boiled or use um, java moss um, you know the different substrates um, look these things are egg layers just like an earthworm um, they they come from the bottom of lakes and rivers think about that that's cold water or at least cool um, room temperature is not a good place for them to be so where did I keep mine I kept them in a the refrigerator yep my wife hated that <laughs> we only had one refrigerator in the house hey we were poor what a, what can I say um, keep them in a shallow bowl with just enough water to cover the tube effects worms if you have no substrate in there they're gonna gather in a clump in the middle for the most part and you want just enough water to barely cover that clump and you want to every day or at least every other day take that covered dish out I just put a couple slits in it for oxygen take that covered dish off take the lid off and take it to a sink preferably not one your wife works in for the kitchen <laughs> and run cold water let it run for a while and then put your bowl underneath some moderately flowing cold water you'll learn how much because what you want the water to do is to hit the the clump of worms and bust it apart and white or gray worms are going to float out and they'll float the most and those are dead worms other worms might float away too but you let uh, you know you try and get the water flow so that only the dead ones are floating over the edge and the rest are not when you think you've got it pretty good shut the water off drain as much of the water as you can until you're just barely covering the mass of worms that have reformed in the bottom um, I use no substrate um, I don't use uh, an air stone just an empty bottom and, and now people <laughs> I have watched videos as I said I've read forums as I said and what do you feed tube effects I'm laughing people well I use a mix of dried milk and dried baby food and I mix it together and I form it now people listen these in nature these worms eat decaying plant matter decay, decaying fish matter they eat detritus um, they aren't fussy now for the number of worms you have in a bowl you don't want to feed much you don't want to feed much um, much less than you ever feed fish um, you know one thing that works really nice is any sinking wafer or you know uh, sinking ca uh, cichlid pellets or catfish pellets or wafers of any kind um, you know you can um, you can feed them old veggies that you're about to throw out just don't feed them much 
for a large ball, you know, almost as big as my hand, um, one or two thin slices of cucumber is all you need to feed them and take it out after one day. Take it out. Um, these worms, they, they find stuff just floating in the water. Um, you, you know, because there's, there's stuff in our water. Unless you got super filters on your watering system. But, uh, yeah. Now, how do we avoid the disease issue? Well, first off, if you know where you're getting them and you know they're good, then, then it's cool. If I were to get some tube effects from an unknown source, I might still use them. Here's what we know. Tube effects have a very short lifespan. Uh, I couldn't find anyone that's measured it, but it's got to be in days, no more than a few weeks. Um, then again, I've never seen any that are eight inches long, so maybe they live longer than I think. So here's what you do. You put them in your bowl, you treat them the way I said, and after a few weeks, or maybe even three or four months, they're going to be clean. You haven't been feeding them anything dirty or diseased. And they'll be fine to feed to your fish. They reproduce rapidly. It's a cheap and good source of food for your fish. Uh, I find that live bears in particular, quarry cats in particular, um, those are the two I find love them the most. And both of those require some plant matter in their diet. Use algae wafers. For the uh, live bears, you know, use some floating algae flakes you know or just general fish food it's usually got a mix of everything in it which includes some algae or plant matter um, as I always say you know do a little research just because everyone says it on YouTube doesn't make it true um, yeah it's old school but tube effects man that was a mainstay of the hobby 40 years ago uh, Today, they've, tube effects have a bad reputation um, for some reason, but you know what? For the most part, it's an undeserved reputation. Now, this video isn't going to change that. It doesn't matter. You can uh, make it work for you. Regardless of how you do it, do you use tube effects or not, remember, this is a hobby. You got into it to have fun. So let's keep doing that. Have some fun. Bye.